Getting split ready. Getting split ready. Getting split ready. Getting split ready. For my wife, God rest her soul. Oh God, I'm so sorry. No, no, no. She's not dead. <laughs> We're just divorced. Unscripted and honest discussions on divorce and separation. Getting split ready. What was I supposed to tell him? I divorced you from the show? Here's your hosts, Doug Katz and Mariah Pleasant. Hey, it's Doug Katz and Mariah Pleasant with Getting Split Ready coming to you from the Allstate Skyline Studio at WGN. And we've got a great guest for you today, Sarah Rose, who is a, I don't even know what, you're an organization expert. Professional organizer. Professional organizer, mainly works out of the Western suburbs, trained in the Marie Kondo method, and you were actually trained by Marie Kondo, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Her company's called One Cut Organizing, it's been around for about three years, and she's a member of NAPO, not NATO, because I thought about that first. I can look at guy. <laughs> NAPO, the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much for having so, me. So, you know, a lot of people know about it, have heard about it. Talk a little bit about the Kondo method, because I think it's going to help us a little bit later in the conversation. Okay. So, Marie Kondo is a Japanese woman who really um, changed the way organizing is done. Previously, people were going into their homes, like room by room, and just organized everything and she was the one coming up with the idea you know what that doesn't really work stuff why goes don't from we do room category room, exactly. and it never goes anywhere that's, it, that's or, my house or you right have now. the same stuff uh in different rooms you mean moving stuff from room to room and calling it organized doesn't work no <laughs> <laughs> sorry I need condo for kids i need condo yeah. for my kids yeah but um so she really she really came up with the idea of going category by category that means you get everything from the same category all the clothes into one place and you actually see how much you own and there's this Netflix show mm-hmm. and she has several books out there's a manga out there's uh, the life-changing magic of um, tidying up that's the big bestseller book that she had awesome. and um, so she's she just went global with training people okay. you mentioned clothing what are some of the other categories um, clothing is the first one um, the next one is books okay. then is paper after that, it's a really weird category because it's called komono, which is Japanese for miscellaneous. I'll tell you a little bit more. And after that, it's memorabilia. So the komono is everything in the bathroom, in the kitchen, in the, the garage. Oh, <laughs> it's just okay, everything right. else. But there's subcategories, of course. Right. So in my job is to guide people through all the different categories. Or sometimes I do it room by room or just one garage or something like that. Talk a little bit about, you said... You know, I know you obviously from outside the show. Mm-hmm. You've talked a little bit about divorcing clients and that you work a lot with them. And it makes sense. People downsize. Talk a little bit about divorcing clients and how the, the condo method applies to that. So oftentimes um, people call me um, after they're divorced or they're in the middle of it. They're already split up, like living in two different places. So I usually just work with one person. Um, and uh, they're Id- either staying in the home um, that they previously owned with their ex-spouse. And um, so that means that there's a lot of stuff that belongs to both of them. And now they get to make the decision about everything. Sometimes someone leaves and just leaves everything there. And then mostly the women get to throw everything out, pretty much. So I'm imagining if my husband moved out of our house, which mm-hmm. he's not, by the way, um, if he would like. He's still in the house. A Mm -hmm. lot of what we have is chosen by both of us or owned by both of us Mm -hmm. or placed wherever it's placed in the house by Mm -hmm. both of us. How do you deal with that, with that added layer of divorce emotion? Yeah, there's a lot of emotion. That's a really good point that you're bringing up because that's really, that's the big difference between regular clients and divorce clients. There's a lot of fear going on, like what they're going to find. Like I've had people find, you know, love letters to... sure other people wow. stuff like that or financial documents about stuff that they didn't know that a lot of debt or other accounts that they didn't know about um so there's a certain amount of fear but there's also actually quite a lot of anger usually going into it like wow. you know they just leave me to deal with everything now and i have to do all this work so that's really the big difference that i have to lead them through the emotion and keep them on track and do you prepare to, for those jobs differently? A little bit, also because. Do you know, do you know a lot of time coming in? Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Because so I do, a, I do like a a call before, or we meet actually in person, but we talk a little bit, or we text, and I usually know a fair amount. Like th- they're usually pretty open about what's really going on. 
So I'm, I've watched the show a few times. Mm-hmm. So I have a, a good idea, I think, of what this entails. But I would imagine it's also different getting rid of items when there's like the sadness involved. Like you talked yes. about love letters to mm-hmm. other people. <clears throat> a love letter to myself from my husband who's no longer there. Mm-hmm. That's gotta write be hard love letters to let go. Yourself? I don't really love letters. <laughs> to myself from my husband. You ah, know God, what okay. I mean. Because I do write love letters to myself. All I the bet time. you do, Doug. I bet you do. And those are not getting thrown away. <laughs> no, um, um <clears throat> so when it comes uh, first of all, I'm actually divorced myself. So I okay. know um when I had to do this as well, um, it is hard to let go of those items. Like I had some clothing items that were just uh, part of traveling with my ex-husband and mm-hmm. there were a lot of good experiences with that. And it was hard to really let that go or, or make the decision, do I keep it or do I let it go? And you really have to go item by item because you don't, you don't know if it's going to be something that still brings you joy until you really deal with that one. And that's item. the basis, right? It's about joy. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, like yeah. How, how do you help them sift through the temporary anger and sadness with the long-term joy and not having regret? Yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a very good question because it's, it's hard for them to really feel the joy. Like a lot of them struggle with um, their own self-confidence. Like um, they don't feel beautiful anymore, all of that. So they, they, they want to, um, they need a little especially with clothing and stuff, they need to, you know, sometimes they just don't feel beautiful at all. And they need to have a certain comfort level with their clothing. So it's, it's kind of hard to really feel the joy af- aspect sometimes. Sometimes it's more like having what you need and starting the process all over. Do you ever, ever have anybody who just gets rid of everything? Like just says, yes. <clears throat> I'm starting new. Yes. Nothing, nothing, none of this brings me happiness. Yes. Like I, I have a lot of people that call me and say, we, we need to burn the whole house down. <laughs> or, or you come in and help me. <laughs> wow. And I'm like, well, I don't bring the matches. I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't do that. <laughs> um, but yeah. It's, have it's, there ever been times, um, I'm monopolizing this. You're getting go ahead. But it's fascinating. <laughs> do you ever find things where maybe the ex didn't know it was there? And it's obviously something of importance. Mm-hmm. Are you ever able to kind of pull that out and say, I get it, this is hurting you, but your ex-spouse might want this. Oh, yeah. Because it's something, a family heirloom or something like that. Yes, yes, that's definitely what we do. We usually do just, you know, we have boxes and we put it all in there. <laughs> Sometimes it gets thrown in there <laughs> with a little extra, but yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we usually just create one big box that they're supposed to pick up or it has to be sent somewhere or sometimes it doesn't get picked up. And then we just... Uh, I have to guide them through with setting a deadline. I'm going like, okay, yeah. if he doesn't show up until then, then you're good to go. You can, you can, as long as you have it written, you know. So when there's a family involved mm-hmm. and there's children involved, mm-hmm. obviously, like two and three year olds probably wouldn't have a role to play in this. But Not much. ten, fourteen, mm-hmm. do the older children participate in this process? Yes, yes. Um, I usually say um, starting around six. That's when okay. they can start making real decisions before then they live in the magical world and happy they, place they, one day they're like i need everything next day they're like i don't want anything yes, so, i have a basement yeah. full of nerf guns that exactly for a year were the best thing yeah. ever and, and now, now <laughs> i can take I those off your hands i have someone who thinks really? they're the best thing ever yeah okay, we'll talk about go. that later um, i actually <laughs> do too <laughs> yes. i like nerf guns no yeah. but it's um <laughs> where were we um no kids so <laughs> so if they're six or a little bit older sometimes a little bit younger too they're actually able to start making their own decisions. And um, usually the younger ones are, have a little harder time with letting go of things just because of the whole emotional thing. It's sure. a little bit harder on them usually with a divorce. Um, but I, I do have sessions where I lead like a mom through their clothing. And at the same time, I run from one room to the next and mm. lead the kids on as well with, with their clothing or books or whatever we're doing. So it's, it's a collaborative Events That's right. mm-hmm. So there's another popular TV show, Hoarders. Mm-hmm. Do you come across people who are the opposite of what Doug said, where they want to get rid of everything and they just want to keep everything? Yes. That's the other part of also going through a divorce is that it's scary and sometimes you don't have enough or the feeling of scarcity that you won't have enough money, all of that. Mm-hmm. And then you hold on to a lot. And also what I see a lot actually is that moms hold on to a lot of baby clothing items of their kids, although they, they still have the kids with them, mm-hmm. but they tend to keep holding on to them just because they just experienced that loss. And now they're trying to subconsciously probably trying to hold on wow. and ke- save a little bit more 
but th- here's the thing they they it's a process you start with one category you keep going and at the end usually it's like a layer of an onion you go back again over it how long is a typical engagement with somebody well, going through a divorce or not i guess well it's the whole process usually takes about 6 months okay wow well because I would you, not you can't that. i mean you can't work on it like Right, twelve hours a day. So you have see. To that's how I would it. want to attack it. Exactly. I would want to do a, like an intensive weekend yeah. and just get through it. But yeah. that doesn't work. It's, it's that's a how I lose bit. all my power cords in my house. My yeah. <laughs> power <laughs> cords and screws and the things that I always need. Yes, uh-huh. those disappear. <laughs> exactly. No, I mean, of course, it's good to have like a kickstart okay. event where you really dig in. Uh, sometimes do weekends, stuff like that. Um, but in the end, it, it takes. Think about how long it took you to get everything, like assemble everything that you have in your house. It takes a while, so it also takes a while to make the decisions about it. But um, there are, like people that are divorced are generally more ready to really get rid of things by the time they call me. Like They've already gotten rid of one thing. Like, yeah. of <laughs> Seriously, no, I, I really think it has something to do with that. They're ready. They already had a big life change. Right. They're ready to tackle the next thing. They, they, and they know that they're going to feel better when they're done with this. They, they know that, so they're ready to get over the hard part and just let it go. Well, this has been great information. If people want to get hold of you, how can people get hold of you? Um, right now, um, probably best is Facebook. Okay. Either Sarah Rose or um, One Cut Organizing. There's a Facebook page. Got it. And I actually also just created a group after the Netflix start started. Um, I'm guiding people through different challenges every two weeks Ooh, like a different really cool. thing where they can do this in a group i have like 240 members right now wow and in the meantime it's from all over the country <laughs> um, it started just in oak park but, so and that's called um condo wits uh, w i t s got it i do have one last Fine. question so this process is anywhere from a few months to six months mm-hmm. or maybe longer what is the desired end goal um, the goal is really that they are surrounded by things that they love and not being reminded of all the old stuff from their old life so that they can really start a new life and really go on that path and really figure out what they want to do with the rest of their lives. I bet that sounds amazing to a lot of listeners. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Well, don't forget to subscribe, share the information to anybody out there who you know can help. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook. LinkedIn, and all the different podcast networks. So please subscribe and help us get the word out there. Thanks for joining us and listening to the Getting Split Ready podcast. Look for Sarah Rose on Facebook. And remember that you really can, we believe it, you can get through your divorce with your finances, your integrity, and hopefully your sanity intact. Thanks for listening.